Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture on news media, protest and politics. This lecture is a part of your paper on news and society. Part 1 about the module This module attempts to sketch out the broad strengths of thinking on the extent relationship between news media and movements, which falls within the larger body of work on media and politics. The question of representation is central to this field of inquiry and much theoretical gaze has therefore been on whose protests get represented in news media, when and why. These concerns are also the focus of discussion here. Part 2 – Mediating Politics In the media-saturated world we live today, the power of news media is discernible more than ever. It is now widely recognized that news media has a substantive bearing on body politic, especially in liberal democratic context and this interface between media and politics is therefore at the heart of media studies. Politics is increasingly being played out in and via the media, especially the 24-7 news channels. And scholars are concerned, therefore, not only with how politics is constituted within media narratives, but, but also the larger political implications of media power to frame and proclaim. Herein, a whole body of work is devoted to the agenda setting role of new media, that is, the ways in which news media gives salience to certain issues such as through particular selection and ordering of news items, privileging one voice over another or through allocation of the last word. This has a considerable bearing on what issues and perspectives gain traction among the political class and the larger public. As forces of socio-political change, social movements also shares a complex relationship with the state and politics. In many ways, the nature and development of social movements cannot be understood without reference to the central role of the state. The state is simultaneously the target, sponsor and antagonist for social movements as well as the organizer of the political system and the arbiter of victory. The mediation of politics also has an import on movements. For instance, it has been observed that a considerable share of interaction between social movements and political authorities today is no longer in the shape of direct confrontation between them and physical sites, but as indirect mediated encounters in mass media spaces. Authorities react to social movements based on how these are depicted in the mass media and conversely movement activists also became aware of political opportunities and constraints through the reactions or non-reactions on their actions in the public sphere. Even as physical public spaces such as the streets and squares continue to be important for mobilization and representation of movements causes. Through the enactment of protest but recent political history from across context, whether the Arab Spring in the Middle East or the India Against Corruption movement testify to the increasing role of news media in giving voice and support to them. News media potentially lend this movement's visibility, resonance and legitimacy. Even though this relationship is asymmetrical, such that movement need the media much more than the other way around. There might be then some truth in the contention that like the tree falling unheard in the forest, there is no protest unless protest is perceived and projected. By conveying information about protest, news media help in diffusion of the protest or trigger protest waves. This can alter the scale of publicity of the protest from a local to a national or even global sphere. There is thus a kind of a triadic relation among politics protest and news media, such that news media are part of politics and part of protest. The three of them inextricably 
intertwine in ongoing events. What is important to also note that news media mediates political opportunities for movements because the ways in which news protests or movements are framed have a deep impact on how these are interpreted and received in wider society. For instance, at times the news media have influenced through their overt advocacy of particular issues and at other times influence comes through less overt decisions about what makes the news. By landing its gaze on protests and movements, media enable them to command some political attention and thereby provide a political opportunity structure. These political opportunities are central to the emergence and development of social movements and are primarily structured by the organization of the state. The cohesion and alignments among political elites and the structure, ideology and composition of political parties. The concept of political opportunity structure is part of a larger approach called the political process approach which is concerned with political and institutional environment in which social movements and their protests operate. Part 3. The Politics of Representation studies on media typically focus on any or all of three important aspects. The first is production, that is the ways in which media is organized, including the structure of its ownership, revenues and production practices. The second is the text, that is the content produced by these media, including in oral, audiovisual forms and the third is consumption, that is the ways in which audiences read, engage with or make meanings of these texts. The study of any one of these aspects both requires and allow rich insights into other aspects. For instance, an analysis of news text needs has to be necessarily be buttressed by an understanding of the political economy context of the news media at large and the institution in particular as also the potential ways in which these texts are consumed by the audience. This include 1. A quantitative investigation of which movements are covered in the media and how much that is done by tracing the number of stories and 2. A qualitative focus that is how the movement are discursively framed within these stories. The studies could focus on recent movements or take a longitudinal span tracing shifting representations over time. Within this body of work, some threads of observation are recurrent, one of which is the continuing importance of protest activity. It has been noted time and again that movements often come into representative focus during specific moments which more often than not are cycles of protest. Although protest is only one among the large ensemble of political actions undertaken by movements, but given its visual and performative character, it necessarily stands out from other routine actions. As repeated public displays, protests are often at the heart of the contentious politics of movements. A moot question here is whether all ongoing protests find space on the newsprint or screens. The simple answer is no. As the scholars note, media are very selective in their representation of protests and movements. There is a distinct selection bias that operates such that only a fraction of protests happening on the ground find space in media. Selection bias involves media gatekeepers, that is editors. Choices of a very small number of protest events to report from a much larger pool of events which could be reported. That selection is part of the media's agenda setting role. What is also important to note that even when a few protests and movements are brought in focus, they may be framed differentially based on a host of subjective factors. Frames of preferred meanings that are conveyed by a mix of selection, emphasis or exclusion. The framing may be done in ways that distorts movement's goals or it may neutralize or even undermine social movement agendas.
There is thus not only a selection bias but also a description bias in representation of protest and movements. Description bias involves how a selected protest event is portrayed in a media story. Inherent in this term is the assumption that the media construct interpretations of protest events that differ from both the objectives of the protesters and interpretations of other observers. That media portrayal helps agenda building processes. This description bias, although not obvious, manifests in a number of ways. This includes inadequate coverage of the actual issues raised by the movements, enhanced focus on the dramatic nature of events or framing the movement goals in ways that are contrary to the movement's own perspective. This begs a question on why some movement garner media coverage and others don't, as also what influences the nature of this coverage. This has invited much critical scholarship, some strengths of which are discussed here. An important observation is that media is that media either ignore or display acute negative bias for movements that threaten the political and economic status quo. Jutlin, in 1977, who extensively studied television's coverage of opposition's movement, outlined that the coverage of such movement is a process comprising three phases. In phase one, movements gain a space on media's agenda due to a, due to a complex set of compelling factors. Even if almost always in a distorted form, emphasizing style and means not issues. In phase two, Media polarize the movements into responsible and the irresponsible and in phase 3, media omit or censor the movement. Here only the moderate, responsible, legitimate movement may go on getting covered, but the potentially dangerous do not. At crucial junctures defined by media elites, their general interest in stability and social cohesion overwhelms the journalistic code of coverage. In a similar vein, Song in 2007 says that when it comes to ideologically sensitive issues, mainstream news media serve as an institution of social control by imposing frames that marginalize movements that challenge the established values. The most common frame used by mainstream news media is one of law and order, which emphasizes the violent and threatening nature of the movement under question. This argument is resonant in discussion of the media representation of anti-capitalist May 1968 protest in Paris. It is commonly believed that media coverage supported revolutionary actions but a closer look reveals a different picture. By broadcasting the events in the abstract universality of public opinion, they imposed a sudden and inordinate development on the movement of events. And through this forced and anticipated extension, they deprived the original movement of its own rhythm and of its meaning. In a word, they short-circuited it. Transgression and subversion never get on the air without being subtly negated as they are transformed into models, neutralized into signs, they are eviscerated of their meaning. Similar observations were made by scholars with regards to the 2011 anti-capitalist Occupy movement protest which spread from United States to a number of other countries. In the mainstream media, OWS, Occupy Wall Street was a stillborn, first neglected and then frivolously framed. The media contributed to a negative representation of protest. This negative framing of the protest movement hindered its ability to sustain a relevant and important critique of economic inequality. The mainstream media outlets repeated a pattern of negative framing of economic globalization, protest from the past, and repeated negative stereotypes from media coverage of the WTO, World Bank and IMF protests of the late 90s and early 2000s. The mainstream media are not only hostile to protest and movements challenging structural inequalities of class, but also that standing against caste, race or patriarchy. In this vein, much scholarship is focused on the negative media representations of the feminist movement, which is chiefly achieved by equating the goals of the movement with that of market. Consumption is 
tied to empowerment and in such a narrative an empowered woman is one who can freely make choices to build her selfhood whether at home or outside these choices are conditioned with dominant norms of beauty or youth domesticity and career as propagated by the advertisements through such representations the media have unleashed an era of post feminism a kind of backlash and negation of the gains of feminism a blatant display is a deep resistance to the political objective of feminism in which the struggle against patriarchy is viewed in intersection with struggles against all the other structural inequalities part 4 decoding news representations the selection and descriptive bias of news media particularly against protest movements that threaten the status quo can only be explained through reference to the ideological nature of mass media as it has been highlighted in the previous modules mass media whether print and television are ideological as much as dependent on the power structures that own and sponsor them in how they disseminate discourses that lend to refy these very structures news media is perhaps one of the most powerful communicative genre especially as news is invested with notions of objectivity as jitlin in 1977 says in the context of television news the remarkable power of television in particular is that by showing you what seems to be real events and speaking of them in human voices television presents a world that seems incontrovertible Television also contributes powerfully to a fetishism of facts that ideological choice of subjects and the ways of presenting them are masked by the appearance of objectivity. This projected and perceived objectivity is affected as the making of news is similar to this of function as it involves a subject process of choosing and constructing events from an unlimited set occurring daily. perhaps the fictional forms such as the soap operas draw from non fictional modes such as news for after all the first true use of this open ended series format would seem to be the news bulletin endlessly updating events and never synthesizing them in this context a number of scholars have dwelt on the range of ideological conventions that go in the construction of news such as the mode of address camera positioning and movement narrative structure and editing which are often put together under the umbrella term news formats here the concept of news value has also gained prominence which refers to the negotiated set of factors that make a story or an event newsworthy enough for inclusion in the bulletin news value is itself based on two criteria one the availability of the material and two producers perception of the audience the factors that help decide news worthiness include drama visual attractiveness entertainment importance size brevity negativity recency elites and personalities the imagined or addressed spectator of news is often male even when women are employed as news readers the content and form of their presentation conforms to a masculine order women seldom appear as public figures speaking subjects or experts and are representative of private sphere as wives mothers sisters of protagonist of news stories or victims of disaster These range of conventions along with institutional practices and assumptions about the audience together constitute the ideological power of news media. This is visible in the selection, ordering and meaning making of events which is done in conjunction with the map of meaning within which our world is already organized and which it is assumed we all share. what follows therefore is that news often defines significant events as those which disruptive to power structures whether of class gender caste race ethnicity or nation within this logic the working rules of 
impartiality, objectivity and balance operate in interest of these structures. These ideological choices also govern the representation of politics, including the movements. Central to this representation is absence of social process and social power. Firstly, news only focuses on events and does, and does not bring in the view the larger socio-political structures and processes in which these events are situated. Secondly, the focus is only on political power, that too by way of covering those who in the political office. News media's coverage of political process is dominated by focus on political personalities rather than the contested political issues or ideologies, all of which contributes to depoliticization. Even as political power is discussed, what is evaded, however, is social or economic power or in the other words, question of political economy. This ensures the continuation of entrenched power interest and systems or the status quo. The processes of economic globalization have unleashed a wave of corporatization and consolidation of media all over the world. A number of scholars working within the critical tradition of news and ideology such as Graham Murdoch, Robert Chesney and Herman N. Chomsky note that in the scenario the space for progressive protest movement has shrunk even further. The domination of media industries by giant multinational corporations comes at a time when diverse new social mobilizations and movements around environment issues, women's rights, racial equality, etc. are emergent even more strongly. This has led to a growing gap between the plurality of voices existing in society and those heard in the media. The logic of market has transformed journalism as a practice that publicizes the interest of the state corporate nexus while marginalizing the voices of the others. Such observations have also been made in the Indian context. With privatization and corporatization of Indian news media in the early 90s, scholars have highlighted the stark absence in news media particularly in television, of issues and concerns related to the urban and rural poor, such as corporate takeover and displacement of land, water and forest of farmer societies, including when they are articulated the protest actions against the existing neoliberal economic order. Within this scenario, one pan-India movement stands out for having gained unprecedented media coverage in recent history, which is the India against corruption for the passage of the Lokpal bill. The series of protests as part of it were telecast live on news channels during the peak phases in 2011. However, as many scholars have analyzed, this coverage can be seen in the light of the fact that while bill under proposal brought under scrutiny the political class, including the lawmakers, law enforcers and government servants, it curiously and conspicuously excluded the corporations or business houses which are equally indicted in the massive scams exposed in the preceding months and years. The dominant discourse both within the movement and the media separated corruption from the political economic context of neoliberalism or the entrenched state market nexus that supports it. With the massive takeover of private news channels in the last few years by big conglomerates like Reliance, a media critic of our oppressive neoliberal order now seems even more implausible. In the research field on media and representations, a pertinent line of inquiry is whether and how these representations enable or impede the realization of movement's goals. There is no simple answer to this. As outlined in the first section, even though media attention bears a significant political import, but this is neither casual nor always predictable. This is because alongside media, a whole set of Complex political factors mediate the political journeys and outcomes of movements. Part 5th Summary This module explored how the news media exist as critical sites for representation of protests and movements.
However, not all protests or movements can claim space on print or screen. And even if they do, they cannot claim this space in the same way. The media have restricted or conditional access, which can chiefly be understood in reference to the ideological nature of mass media. Thank you.